The pandemic changed taste and smell research enormously. Everyone was wondering how COVID-19 causes a loss of taste and smell. So we were very, very, very busy. The mission of the Monell Chemical Census Center is to understand how the senses of taste and smell and some related senses like chemical irritation work and to use this knowledge to improve public health. One really new and exciting discovery and development coming out of Monell is a rapid smell test called Sentinel. And this test was developed during COVID when people started to realize they were suddenly losing their sense of smell. And we knew that it had to be rapid, it had to be cost effective. It had to be a way of assessing not just odor identification, but also ability to detect the odor, how intense is the odor, uh, do you like the odor? At this point, the test has been licensed by a startup company that is taking it to commercial application. And our goal really is that everybody will get their smell tested the same way you get your hearing tested when you're very young. And when you go to your doctor for your annual checkup, you'll get your smell tested. We have four pillars that guide our research across the building. The first of these pillars is diagnosing and treating disease. The topics within this area that we're focused on are things such as diagnosing Parkinson's disease, not just using odors, but we also have done work looking at how these diseases affect our sense of smell. About 10 years ago, I made my husband do a smell test and he flunked it. And I sort of put that in my back pocket and didn't really think too much about it. But later and most recently, I've learned that that's like a very first symptom of Parkinson's disease. And it turns out that he actually does now have that diagnosis. And if I had really understood and the world had really understood earlier on that this is a symptom of Parkinson's disease, he could have gotten treatment much more quickly. What's happening in my laboratory is a little bit different, but it relies on the fact that some of these chemicals that signal an illness um, can be detected by olfaction. So in my lab at Monell, uh, we're very interested in how chemicals signal the health status of an individual. And so if we can uh, determine how those are altered by different diseases, uh, hopefully uh, we can use that information to diagnose specific diseases. The second pillar is what we call sensory nutrition. My lab primarily focuses on gut-brain signaling as well as the neural control of food intake. And so in other words, we're really interested in understanding how the foods we eat impact neural activity in the brain and how that activity then influences our eating behavior. The other thing, and this is kind of a newer project in the lab, but we're really interested in understanding how uh, neural circuitry underlies the efficacy of drugs, FDA-approved drugs, for obesity. The third pillar is attacking the loss of taste and smell. And in this pillar, we are both looking for ways to prevent loss of these senses, as well as repair them when they've been lost from a virus such as COVID. So the center is working really hard to try to find ways to improve or fix this loss of taste and smell. We're studying things at the level of the taste and smell cells, understanding what's going on, how to encourage them to regrow, all the way up to the whole person and to understand how, um, like for instance, smell training or teaching the brain to smell again might improve taste and smell. And the last pillar is digitizing tastes and smells. When you take out your phone and take a picture of something, we understand how to take a visual representation of something and turn it into numbers. Uh, you can then use those numbers and manipulate them in a lot of different ways. So you can use Photoshop to change that photo. Uh, you can store that photo and bring it up over and over again without destroying it. And we can't do any of that in olfaction. We don't have a way to transform those into numbers. So a lot of what we're doing is trying to take uh, a lot of different odors and understand how to look at chemical properties and map those to what they actually smell like. It's a tricky problem, but there are a lot of uh, methods now, so we sort of classify them as machine learning techniques that are good at looking at these really complicated patterns and figuring out uh, how to solve that problem. One of the other recent developments here is 
As we've grown and we've expanded our research, we realized that we wanted to expand our analytical chemistry effort. One of our former analytical chemists, Dr. George Preddy, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago, his family was kind enough to help us to start this George Preddy core. So the core exists to support research throughout the center and um, many of my colleagues have the need to um, analyze uh, tissues or other kinds of samples and because of the new instrumentation that allows us to do non-volatile type compounds in very, very low concentrations, it's opened up an opportunity to provide that kind of support. I think that the big issue with COVID-induced smell loss has brought to light the importance of taste and smell throughout life. My hopes for the future of the Monell Center are that we will continue to grow and thrive. I see our work developing the technologies that the world of tomorrow will take for granted in the same way that we take our cell phones for granted today.